Welcome to Legal Video Resource. I'm Jason Wietalter. Today, we're talking about the best microphones for deposition video. So what's the best microphone for deposition video? Well, let's kind of start with what's not and explain why it's not. Because there are kind of two you know, people or perspectives that are in operation in any deposition video. There's you as the videographer and there's everybody else as, you know, in video terms, the talent. Uh, maybe people that are used to working with microphones and maybe people that aren't used to working with microphones. So there's two users for each microphone. And so each person kind of brings their own perspective to the table of where to place it, how it should look, how it should sound, how they should use it. You're the expert on everything audio video because you're the videographer and everybody in the room will look to you as the expert. So that means that you have to kind of choose for them the best microphone for the job. And then you kind of have to train them really quickly on how to use it. Now, that being said, all those users, the talent at a deposition, the attorneys, the witness, maybe the interpreter, you kind of have to think about how they think about microphones. So the first one we're gonna talk about that isn't a microphone that we would recommend for deposition video, but that you might be familiar with nonetheless, is a handheld style microphone. This is a handheld microphone like you see um, in pretty much any presentation where it's wireless, um, also for musicians or singers on, stand, on stage, they might have this on a stand and be able to sing into it. It's a great microphone for those purposes because everybody kind of knows what they are. They see them so much that you pick this up and you kind of know, oh, I hold it like this, I put it in front of my mouth, boom, I'm done, I know how it works. So from the user or the talent side of things, there's not a lot of guesswork that goes into this type of microphone. You pick it up, you hold it in front of your mouth, you speak into it, it makes sense. That's what how a microphone works. You speak into it, it sends information down this cable and magically my voice gets louder and bigger. So it makes sense, a handheld microphone makes sense. But it's not really practical in a deposition setting because you don't want, I mean, you probably don't want to see me talking like this all day long. And a video with this in between kind of if, if you're doing it, you know, the best way and placing it kind of the best way, it's right in front of my mouth. Now you can't see exactly what it is that I'm saying. And so maybe, maybe you wonder, am I actually saying those things? Um, you know, it kind of blocks and is distracting. And, and also you don't want to train somebody to have to like sit there all day long answering questions like this, because their arm will get tired. I mean, professional speakers, they switch back and forth between hand to hand because their arms get tired holding this microphone and people like to talk with their hands. And also from a deposition video standpoint, you don't wanna really force a witness or an attorney to learn how to do this all day long when they don't do it all day long. It's not something that they're used to, it's something that's gonna be really distracting for them and they can't focus on asking the questions or giving the answers, which is the whole point of the deposition. So handheld microphones might be great because they're instantly, you know, user friendly, but they're not exactly the best for deposition purposes. And from the videographer's standpoint, you know, having somebody that's not trained on how to hold or use a handheld microphone, um, they will inevitably do this and this and this and this, and they'll eventually just put it down on the table. And now you would get really, really poor quality audio out of this microphone because now they've kind of controlled where it's at. So as the videographer, you want to eliminate those kind of variables where they can move the microphone or maybe set it down while they're shuffling through papers. So a handheld microphone, not great. Let's talk about another microphone, a shotgun microphone. Now this is a small version of a shotgun microphone. Um, and some people, you might see these in some situations where they're on stands in front of people kind of pointed at their mouth, but typically they're on boom arms kind of hung over somebody and pointed at their mouth. Now, these are definitely cool microphones and they work really well for the purpose of, you know, kind of eliminating noise around them and just getting noise, getting sound from what they're pointed at but they require somebody to know how they work. They require 
your talent, the, you know, the end user to know that, Hey, I kind of need to talk into this microphone. I can't like bend over or look at something. Um, I need to make sure I'm kind of always in front of this microphone because their directionality, if I get off just a little bit, it would totally change the way this microphone sounds. Similarly, if I, you know, point the microphone up or if I point it down by accident, now it totally changes the way it sounds. So shotgun microphones, while cool and maybe really useful uh, in running in situations where you're pointing them at somebody on the top of a camera um, to pick up what it is they're talking about, or maybe you have time in a documentary style setting to actually set up a boom and um, shotgun mic over your talent so that you can actually hear them and you have a, you have a chance to actually place it the way you want it, they're great. But if you're using them for deposition video, they're not great because it really requires whoever is using it to know how to use it. And again, we're trying to eliminate variables and make it as easy as possible on the people that are using it. And so again, if the witness or the attorneys are having to think, I need to make sure I'm talking into this microphone, um, it's gonna distract them from doing what it is they should be doing in that deposition, which is answering questions or asking questions. Also, Again, if somebody moves a little bit or gets a little bit off center or outside the sweet spot of this microphone, then it really changes the volume, how it sounds. It really messes with you. So it, there's a lot of variables that go into a microphone like this. So don't really recommend this either for deposition video. Now let's talk about boundary microphones. And boundary microphones are meant to be placed on a table, flat, some flat surface like this. They could be mounted to a ceiling or maybe hung on a wall or something like that. But typically in a deposition video setting, they're made to be placed on a table, flat, just like this. Now, these microphones are great for that purpose uh, to be placed flat on a table because they're kind of like telephone conference microphones. They just kind of pick up everything and everybody. They're not you can get some that are directional in the sense that they pick up, you know, what's in front of the microphone versus what's behind it. Uh, but most of them pick up all around. And especially since they're on a table, they're going to pick up all the sounds that are kind of reverberating off of that table. So boundary microphones are great as backup microphones in deposition, but they're not great as primary microphones in a deposition. And here's why, because once you put this down on a table, it's pretty innocuous. I mean, it's pretty flat, it's pretty small. Um, if this is on a dark table, I'm gonna forget it's there. And, and when I'm the attorney asking questions or the witness answering questions, I'm gonna forget it's there and I'm probably gonna shuffle papers, maybe stack papers on top of it. And once you do that, then this microphone is basically worthless because now you can't hear anything clearly because now you've got a stack of papers on top of it and you've cut off all the sound. The other thing that happens is because this picks up so much sound from the table, from things reverberating off the table. If somebody takes a pen and taps it on the table or clicks it near the microphone or plays with papers or taps their fingers or does something on the table, this microphone is gonna pick it up. So it's not great as a primary microphone because it's kind of, you know, it's kind of prone to a lot of variables in the room happening when people forget that it's there. It's also not the cleanest sound you're gonna get as a deposition videographer. You want clean, clear, crisp sound um, so that everybody comes across clearly because what you're trying to capture is what everybody is talking about, how they look and how they sound. And so you want the clearest audio you can get and this just isn't gonna give it to you. It's a great backup microphone and that's a great microphone if you have a bunch of extra speakers, potential speakers in a room that maybe you don't have individual microphones for. This is a great backup microphone or extension of that mic of those individual microphones for a group of people. Again, if you don't expect that they're gonna talk or talk much at all, but you just kind of need a microphone just in case they do, these boundary microphones are great to have. They don't take up much space um, and they're easy to set up. And once they're set up, you can kind of set it and forget it. Um, and maybe just gain them up and down as you need them. But not a primary deposition microphone, but they work really well as a uh, backup or a secondary style microphone. The last type of microphone that we're gonna talk about are lavalier microphones. And these are the best microphones for deposition video. And here's why. You take one of these microphones, you tell somebody, hey, just clip this to your shirt or clip it to your jacket. 
they do that and they forget about it. And they don't think about that microphone for the rest of the deposition. You get good, consistent, quality sound because now this microphone is right up next to somebody's mouth or right below somebody's mouth, right on their chest. It's picking up good quality sound. And it's not something that's going to move. Like as they move, you know, as I move, uh, the livelier microphone stays with me. So for you as the videographer, this microphone, what it's picking up is going to stay consistent. It's versatile. It's really, you know, easy to place on a, a blouse, on a jacket, on a shirt, on a tie. Um, you can clip it to a necklace. If you don't have anything to clip it to, um, you can clip it to like a lanyard and stick it around somebody's neck. Um, these can also be hidden in certain circumstances. So if you wanted to hide a lavalier microphone, you could do that. You know, as an example, I have a little lavalier microphone hidden right here. Sorry, you're probably getting some noise now, but I have a little lavalier microphone hidden right here. So you can hide lavalier microphones in certain situations. Maybe you don't have the ability to set up a shotgun and you also don't want a microphone to show up in a shoot. This might not be deposition video specific, but some other legal video, a great thing you can do with lavalier microphones because they're so small is to hide them under clothing or um, even hide them in people's hair, uh, in sunglasses, under a hat, under a lapel. You know, there are lots of ways that you can hide these. The other thing that's nice is they are relatively ubiquitous, especially in the legal video arena. So if, you know, your witness has ever watched sports or sports broadcasters, they've probably seen a close-up shot with the lavalier microphone, you know, clipped right onto somebody's tie right here. And so they've seen it a lot. And so when they see a microphone with a clip on it, they go, oh, I clipped that on here. They kind of know how it works. Attorneys, they've probably been in other deposition videos. They've seen other attorneys wear lavalier microphones for deposition video. They've probably worn them before in deposition video. So they're used to it. They might not be perfect at it. You know, they might want to clip on that microphone and clip it like way down here. And you might go, eh, let's move that thing up. So it's, you know, more within range of where I want it to be for picking up good audio. But they at least kind of know how it works. And they know that if they stack papers up, it's probably going to get muffled. Um, but lavalier microphones are really the best. And there are two different types of pickup patterns you can typically get with lavalier microphones. One is Omni, and Omni picks up from every direction. So if this microphone is clipped on correctly pointed up, it's gonna pick up audio from me speaking into it from the top. If I clip it on upside down, you know, clip it on this way, so it's upside down, so now the microphone capsule is actually pointed down, it's still gonna pick up audio fairly clearly. Maybe not as clearly as if it was pointed up in the correct direction, but an omnidirectional microphone will still pick up audio from every direction. So it's going to pick it up really well this way. Now, the downside to that is it also picks up audio from everybody else. So it picks up noise from all around the room, it picks up noise from the table. It picks up noise from everywhere. So I could get a cardioid microphone or cardioid style lavalier microphone. So that pickup pattern just kind of faces the front. Good thing is now I'm rejecting a lot of noise from the back and a lot of noise from all around me but the microphone has to be placed up and towards me in the correct direction. If I place it down, suddenly it's gonna be rejecting noise from me and picking up sound from everywhere else, which isn't great because what I wanna do is pick up what it's clipped onto, the person that's clipped onto. So lavalier microphones, omnidirectional is really good because it's really universal. You just clip it on pretty much any direction and you're good to go. Cardioid is great because it rejects sound from different directions. But lavalier microphones, um, they're also a little bit problematic because everybody has to wear them. And so the thing you have to watch out for is when you go off the record as a deposition videographer and these are clipped onto somebody's shirt, hopefully throughout the course of that video, whatever amount of time you've been recording, they've kind of forgotten the microphone is there. And if they've forgotten the microphone is there, that means that they're able to focus on answering questions or asking questions, which is what you want your client and the witness to be able to do, or what you want the attorneys and your witness to be able to do. But that also means they've forgotten about it. So as soon as you go off the record, they might jump up and leave or try to leave the table with that microphone still clipped on and attached to them. And so as they start to run off, you might go, whoa, whoa, whoa hold on, unclip that first, and then you can leave. So that's just something to be aware of. They are great 
Um, but you might run into that situation in which they're clipped on, the people have forgotten about them and you need to remind them, hey, before you walk away, make sure to unclip that microphone. Now, also because the people that are wearing them are typically not trained in video production, they maybe don't know how um, fragile or touchy or how sensitive lavalier microphones are. So if you know, they wanna whisper something, lavalier microphone, because of where it's placed, is probably gonna pick that up. Also, they might not know how to handle that microphone, so they might throw it on the table, or they might drop it, or, uh, you know, they might do something that you wouldn't do with a microphone, and they might do it just because they've forgotten that they had it on, or they might do it because they're frustrated and they might not be thinking about that microphone. But be aware that people will forget about these or not treat them with as much respect as you do, and so they can get damaged more quickly. That's why it's important that you pick one up that's really um, well-built, that's a, a professional broadcast-style microphone that's, that's designed to be used again and again and again, and also pick up something that you can replace. Maybe you can't replace it instantly. Maybe you can't walk down the street and replace it because you can't usually find these unless you live in a place where um, audio video, professional audio video gear is sold out of retail. You can't just find these anywhere. So it's really important to kind of know that you can replace it or how to replace it or how to fix one if one goes wrong, but it's really important that you pick a professional one because that way you'll know that even if somebody mistreats it, it's still gonna function or still perform fairly well. Um, even if they mistreat it a little bit, it'll still kind of last the test of time. So those are some microphones for deposition video. Handhelds, really don't recommend them even though they're really easy for people to use and understand. Shotgun microphones definitely don't recommend for deposition video because it really requires whoever's using them to know how they're using them. And when you're talking about a deposition and you're the only videographer there and you don't have a boom operator or anybody else to help you, um, having one of these or multiple of these sitting out at the end of the table far out of your reach makes life really hard. Um, and if you did use these, you'd pretty much be running from the camera to the end of the table where these are making adjustments running back and forth, and it's not a good situation. Boundary microphones are great as backups. They are great as secondary microphones to kind of pick up everything going on in a room. They're not great as primary microphones because they require people to not put stuff on them or rattle stuff on a table or tap on a table. Um, so they're, they're great microphones for the secondary or backup purpose, but they're not great as a primary microphone. The best microphone for deposition video is definitely a lavalier microphone because that allows the witness and the attorneys to simply clip them on and forget about them. And it allows you as the videographer to get really clean, clear audio and consistent audio without a lot of variables in a very small, easy to carry package. So those are some of the best microphones for deposition video. Thank you so much for joining us today as we talked about the best microphones for deposition video. If you found this video helpful or interesting, I encourage you, click subscribe down below because as we post new content to this channel, you'll be the first to know about it. Also, if you have a question or a comment, maybe something you wanna know more detail about, let us know in the comments down below. We'll try to answer those there or create video content to post here to the channel later. Again, thanks so much for joining us. We will see you next time on Legal Video Resource.